Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Apologies if you've seen me wearing the same outfit for the last two videos. I'm recording two today and it's so hot in this room that if I even try and move, I'm going to melt and I'm going to bail out on this next video. So anyway, I wanna to talk to you today about storage for handbags. Now you might think that that sounds really random. Over the course of time, I've definitely made a couple of mistakes that have damaged some of the bags and wallets that I've got. And I wanna share these mistakes with you so that you can avoid them too. But also if you're someone who loves your bags, you're maybe collecting them or it could even be shoes, a lot of this advice extends to shoes, then hopefully there is something in this for you. We always think about damage and wear and tear happening when we're using them, but actually some of the worst damage I've personally ever experienced has been when they've been in my storage. So the first thing is you need to make sure you pick a place that is both dry, well ventilated and out of sunlight. A couple of years ago, before I really realized what I was doing, I used to keep my bags in their dust bags and I used to keep them in the boxes that I got from the boutique. Some bags I probably wouldn't take out for maybe six months or more, certainly if they were sort of in seasonal colors. And what happened was I opened up a lot of the boxes and I was immediately hit with the smell of that sort of like dank, damp, borderline moldy smell. They weren't damaged. The leather felt a little bit damp to the touch, but thankfully I was able to take them out, air them. That sort of dampness went, but the smell remained. If you do live in a humid environment, then what I would suggest is find a place where you're gonna keep your bags. Buy yourself a dehumidifier. You can get tiny ones. That's what I did in the end. You can buy these tiny little dehumidifiers that are really powerful. They are like sucking water out of the air and you're thinking, where the hell are you getting that from? The next thing is make sure that your bags are stored in an area that has not got direct sunlight. Direct sunlight bleaches the color out of everything. Don't store your bags in the boxes that you get from the store. I mentioned earlier what happened to me, but if you think about it, when you're keeping your bags in there, there's no air circulation. It's leather at the end of the day. It needs to breathe. I bought this shelving unit. This is an item that I really like. It lets you display the bags in a way that you can see. I definitely noticed that when I had my bags in the dust bags, because I couldn't see them, you often forget about some of the bags that you've got. I got quite a big one, but you can get these from Ikea in different sizes and I'm gonna show you one here that I've got which is smaller and you can also get an even smaller one that's just got four cubes so if you have a look at the IKEA website you can customize these depending on how big you need them to be whether you keep them in their dust bags or not I personally don't what I do is I fold up the dust bags I lay them on the shelf so that the bags over time don't sort of like stick or adhere at all this is particularly important for any bags that you've got that are patent and then what I do is I stand all of my bags up but I make sure none of them are touching so that like the air can get through but equally if you've got two different bags in two different colors just so that one doesn't transfer color to the other if your bag has got a chain handle or if like this bag that I'm going to show you here this is the Louis Vuitton Bria if you've got handles like this that flap down over the bag particularly with Louis Vuitton. I have heard stories before of people with the verni leather and with the handles tucked down when they're in storage and when they lift the handles, it's left like an orange like hoop mark where it's transferred onto the actual bag itself. I saw this happen with someone who had an Alma BB in the Rose Ballerine and the handles have been down and when they took it out of storage, they it look, it literally like two smiles either side. If you've got something like this where you can't detach the chain, what I personally do is I get some tissue paper and I wrap the handles up mainly for the fact of can you see here where it lays flat and it touches the bag sometimes i had this with my boy bag where i had it laid down for a period of time and it was laying on the actual chain and when i lifted it up the chain had ever so slightly imprinted into the leather so now i know to keep the chain away from the bag tuck it in if you can tuck in the longest bit but with this bit here just maybe put a bit of tissue paper speaking of plastic this was another mistake that I used to make all the time. With any of the stuff that you've got, don't use plastic or bubble wrap to either stuff the bag or to keep the bag wrapped up. Maybe I'm the only idiot that ever did this, but what I used to do is if I didn't pad them, when I took them out of storage, they'd be a bit crumpled. Certainly the Louis Vuittons in any of the canvas, it comes out looking really crinkled up and it takes a few days to sort of straighten itself out. What I did with that is I stuffed it with bubble wrap. Worst mistake I ever did, particularly in the situation I was in, where I was in a more humid environment. So now what I do with that instead is I stuff it with tissue paper, but I'm constantly changing it. This wallet here is a very good example of a wallet that I kept in its dust bag and it did this. Okay, so this is a deal wallet and I'm going to demonstrate this, hopefully. What has happened is the patent started to break down. 
Thankfully it stopped, I caught it in time, but it's tacky, it's sticky to touch. So when you try and open it, can you hear that? It makes a sticking noise and that happened because the wallet was in its dust bag. It was sort of stacked up with other wallets, even though it was in its dust bag, it couldn't breathe. There was no air moving around it. It obviously wasn't in use. The stickiness is worse where the flap was down like that. So another thing that I now do is wherever I have a wallet that's like this, I either stack them all up as you can see here, but I use the little dust bags to go in between each one. So I don't have them in their dust bags. Now for the final tip. Let's say you've been using a bag for a period of time. You decide that you wanna put it away and swap it over for something else. One of the things that I personally find really important and I've made the mistake of this before as well. You would be amazed the amount of dirt that can end up on your bag and you probably don't even notice it. What I do now is before I put a bag away to possibly sit there for a couple of months before I use it again, I will just clean the bag over. It depends on the actual bag and what the composition is of it as to what I'll clean it with. Most of the time I use alcohol-free, conditioner-free baby wipes. I'll also go over the bag after with a lint-free cloth just with some water on it. What you can do if you have a leather bag, and I wanna demonstrate this here with my Chanel Boy, make sure you do a test, okay? But this works for me. It doesn't work for me on everything, but it works for me on the Chanel Boy and it works for me on anything that is black lambskin or on my Chanel Jumbo, the black caviar. This is a product that is actually designed for shoes. It's Express Shine. It's one of these um, things you get that's got the sponge on the other side. I got it in the neutral color, it's clear. There is no color to this. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you here. This is the Chanel Boy. I've been using it for a while. The lambskin is very delicate. It scratches up, even if you try your best not to mark it, you're gonna mark it. But I'm gonna show to you the difference that this can make. So I'm gonna do one half of the bag and then compare it to the other half. Normally I find that going over it just once isn't quite enough. Go over it and you'll notice that the condition and the quality of the leather starts to brighten up quite quickly. Leave the bag somewhere. Normally I hang it up on the chain, let the product sink into it, and then maybe half an hour later, I'll go back over the bag again. You will know when you've gone over it enough. The dust cloth, if you go over the hardware with that, it's incredible incredible the amount of dirt and dust that you can get off there. So the key thing is don't put them away dirty because the dirt on the bag can have a negative impact on the leather. So you want to make sure that when you're rotating your bags and you're putting them back that they're all clean and fresh. That is what I personally do with my bags. I think it's important to look after your stuff anyway but I also do it because I think I've said before that I am someone who Every so often I will sell quite a lot of my bags and I like to sell them in as pristine condition as possible just so it's nice for the next person who owns them. So for me, I just like to do this and definitely I think my learning over the year has improved. If you've got any specific questions, then leave them below. Do remember, if you're gonna use anything like this, do a tiny patch test first. That's what I did on the Chanel bag. I actually lifted the flap and did it on the inside just to make sure if I trashed it, that it was on a hidden area. And it worked and it made a great difference. So for me, this really worked, but don't do anything crazy. If you've got a bag in a light color, I personally wouldn't use this because it will prob in my mind it would probably absorb and almost go like an oil patch. I could be really wrong. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.